We made it. After a long and hard year of interviews, we finally made it. Talk about how I landed the internship, what was involved in the interview process, and what steps I took to get there. And I'll also share some personal learnings that I've had during my time working at AWS. But first, let me just provide some context on myself. The internship meant moving to Sydney, which really put myself out of my comfort zone as someone who rarely gets out of the house and touches grass. We're talking, I used to play Valorant every morning consistently at around 6.30 a.m. and be ready for uni by 9 a.m. and I had zero uni society experience. Secondly, if you're a seasoned comp sci student and you're on the reels, you know the homeless comp sci memes and how hard it is to get a SWE internship in the first place. So I hope this video can shed some light on my process and how I was able to get there in the end. So before I ever got my Amazon interviews, I had two other Big Shot interviews with Big Shot companies. I won't name which companies they were, but I did learn a lot from that experience. One had a rejection from the behavioral side and the second one had a rejection from the technical side. The behavioral side one actually hurt a lot more than the technical side for obvious reasons, because it seems as if your behavior isn't good enough for the company. What I learned though, was that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your behavior is in real life. What matters is how you express yourself and how you express yourself is through the star method. And I didn't get that until I watched a video while I was preparing my Amazon interviews. So I found a really nice video, which I'll link here. And it talks about the star method in depth. And that was really what I needed to get me on the right track and speak about my stories in the right way. I was able to create 11 stories in the span of three days utilizing ChatGPT and watching that video over many times. And that was the most preparation I had done for any interview, putting aside the amount of time I spent on Likert problems, because that's a whole nother story. And of those 11 stories that I created, nine of them all got used. And the reason why that is important is if you ever repeat stories in multiple interviews, uh, at Amazon, at least, this could be flagged and it may deduct you some interview points. And in terms of the number of lead code problems that I actually did, it was about 75 at the time that I was doing the Amazon interviews. These were 75 problems that I did from lead code 150. I'll also link roughly when that last stream was before those interviews, just to give you an idea of how far I was actually through lead code 150. Okay, so what was the Amazon interview process like? For me, it consisted of three interviews. The first one was with the hiring manager and it was 45 minutes of behaviorals and 15 minutes of my own question asking. The second interview was more technical. It was a 30 minute technical and a 30 minute behavioral. And the third and final interview was 45 minutes of technical and 15 minutes of behavioral. During the last two interviews, I also went a little over time. So in the second interview, I actually went over time with my question asking for about 20 minutes. And in my third interview, I went over time by around five to 10 minutes. During the two technical interviews, I was asked a graph problem and a two pointers problem. The graph problem was a specific problem to Amazon, but the second problem that I did was 
a Likert problem called longest substring without repeating characters. So my learnings after the internship. At least within my team, everything is about scale and being aware of time and space complexity is actually useful, especially when you're building your design doc. For a highly available system that I was dealing with, I had to be very careful with putting extra load on that system. Next, I also learned about time boxing. My onboarding buddy was the one who gave me this advice. Uh, at Amazon, there is a lot of documentation and because of that, it's really easy to fall into rabbit holes if you're not conscious of your time. Time boxing helped me check in with myself and become more aware of what I was currently doing and whether I was still on the right track. If I ever got stuck on an error, I would time box the troubleshooting to around 20 to 30 minutes before sending a Slack message to someone, detailing my attempt and then moving on with my life, spending that leftover time on other problems. So this leads onto my third point on context switching. You will do a lot of context switching when you're working at Amazon, mainly because you're working between code bases, multiple code bases, or it's some meeting they have to join and have your input to a conversation. And because of all of this context switching, being able to master that will help you in the long run. And the last but not least is asking good questions. So this was another piece of great advice from my onboarding buddy, and he gave me this article on how to ask good questions. I've linked that above as well, or over here, so you can check that out. And a simple way to gauge whether you're asking a good question or not is whether it makes it easy for someone else to answer. So for example, you can make a question easy by ending your questions with, is this right? A more concrete example of that would be something like, hey, my IntelliJ isn't working. I tried to sync my workspace. I tried to look on Slack and see any past messages that came across this exact error problem that I had. And from my understanding, this problem stems from not being able to connect to the database. Is this right? Yeah, so that's it. That's, uh, that's all the information that I have. Hopefully this was somewhat useful. Uh, I know this is also not the greatest video, Hopefully I've shed some insight into my experience both getting the internship and doing the internship. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read all your comments. And if this video was helpful, please leave a like. Thanks.